it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a cover for a different shaped pencil case. So this is one of those pencil cases that I enjoyed using when I was a child when I was at school. You know you have the sort of the flat pencil case people, the round pencil case people and the ones with the zips and the you know the different levels of pencil cases well I always enjoyed using one of these I loved um, opening it up and then just rummaging around and finding my pens but also it was handy to just slot into my bag on the side next to all the books so that is the shape of pencil case that I enjoyed when I saw this as a plain pencil case on Amazon I've got the link down below I thought, wouldn't it be nice if I could cover that in crochet? So I have, and I hope you will enjoy doing this as well. So let's get started. So what do you need? Well, I found this type of pencil case on Amazon. I've linked them down below and it's this type of old fashioned pencil cases. To me, this takes me straight back to my primary school years and I've put a ball of yarn in here so it keeps its shape to show you. So it's got the rounded ends and then the middle like this. So it's not a flat shape like all the other pencil cases that we have done, but this is more what I call a 3D shape. So this is the pencil case as it came out of the package. It's all flat, but here I have a yellow zip and that's the one that I'm going to be using for my design today. So here as well, I am going to be using the stabilizer. I have cut a piece that will go around the pencil case like this. So with the zip here, and then also I have cut two circles, which of course will go on the sides. Now the circles I've cut reasonably large but I might have to recut those but that's okay we'll see how it goes so those are for stabilizing the um, you know the pencil case for making it a little bit more sturdy then we also have our needle and thread to attach it all together of course I've got my scissors my darning needle my hook my three and a half for my DK yarn this is King Cole cotton soft I am using the colors opal buttercup hot pink and lime I thought this was a great combination nice and bright and of course we are going to make certain amount of squares and of course a circle so let's get started so for the main body of the pencil case you're going to have to make squares I'm going to once again assume that you know how to make a granny square if not I'll link a video here and this time we are making a granny square of three rounds and I have made nine of them so that I can make a square like so so here I have my nine squares ready and I'm going to make my joints. So I'm going to do the horizontal ones first and then I'm going to do the vertical ones. So I've decided I'm going to join in the buttercup color because of course my zip is yellow and yeah, you know, I like coordination. Let's make a slip knot here insert the hook and let's see if we can get started so let's take these two squares first so you're going to go and use this one first you go and pick up this back strand of the second chain of the corner you bring up a loop hold everything in your one hand then bring in the next square you're also going to find the back loop, or well, that's actually the loop the closest to you, but it's still called the back loop, um, of this chain here. Once again, you loop around the yarn, pull it through. Now, all this is a little bit loose, so pull, so it all tightens up a bit. And then you're going to pull through the two loops on your hook so you go in pull up in pull up and make a V so 
this is how you are going to do all your joints and so you work your way to the end of the side here of the square and I will meet you there just so that we can get started on our next two squares. So here I am at the corner and I'm doing that first chain of the corner chain. So I do a stitch there. Then I'm going to do a chain. And so this is the join that we have just made. It's a nice flat join. There we go. And so now we are going to get started with our next two squares. Again, holding the yarn underneath taking this square first, going into the chain, the second chain, the back loop, bringing up a loop, then going and taking the next square into that same location on this square, the second chain, the back loop, and wrapping your yarn around, bringing this up and then taking this loop through the other two. There we go. So each time you go into the back loop, wrap the yarn around, bring up a loop, into the back loop here again wrap the yarn around bring up a loop and do your V there we go I'm doing that last stitch of my square here into the chain then chain one and we start again with our next slot so this is how you are going to be doing your join for your horizontal joins and then also for your vertical ones just chaining to get across the join from the other direction now when you're doing this make sure you have all your squares facing the front of course and that you have your join running all nice and straight so no twisted joins like this or even like this where you've got the fronts but it's twisted here because otherwise you will you know end up with a twisted join in your pencil case so i'm going to get started on my next join I will see you when you have made your panel. So I have now finished making my panel for my pencil case. I have done all my joins and I have also sewn in all my ends. So this is of course for the body of the pencil case. The way it is constructed we need two circles. So let me show you how to make it. So let's make our slip knot. Insert the hook and we're going to chain four. One, two, three, and four. Then you go back to your first chain. You try to get in there. There we go. And we can pull through the working yarn and through the loop on your hook. You now have a small circle and we are going to get started by doing two chains. And now we're going to do another nine double crochets. So we need 10 V's around the outside of our work. So in effect, 10 stitches. And of course, these two chains count as our last stitch. So now we are going to do half double crochets. Because we need a certain size of our circle and a certain amount of stitches on the outside when we are finished with our circle, we are going to adapt it to what we need. So we're doing a circle, but we're using half double crochet. So that means you yarn over, 
you go into the circle, you pull up a loop, you yarn over and you pull through the three loops on your hook. And you're going to do that nine times because yes, we need 10 stitches, but that chain two counts as one as well. So do your half double crochets. So you yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through three. And you do that nine times. And as you can tell, hopefully I am trying to take along my end there. So let's see if it works. There we go. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one more to go. Voila. Now I have nine fees. You skip these two here. You go under the ninth V, although you you try to anyway. There we go. And then you do a slip stitch to close the round. And this now has made another V, which is your tenth one. So we now have ten Vs going around the outside of our work. And we are going to change colour. So pull up your loop, cut off the yarn. Pull it through and if you want to be efficient you sew in the ends. Et voila! I've sewn in my ends. So now I'm going to use the buttercup colour because that is my joining colour and I don't want to end with that so better do it now. So make your slip knot, insert your hook and I am now going to pretend I'm already crocheting. So I'm going to yarn over and under any V, I'm going to get started with doing half double crochets. So through the three loops, there we go. And of course, because this is my second round, I'm going to have to place two half double crochets in each stitch around. So in the first round, we had 10 stitches. In this round, we will have 20 stitches. And of course, we're doing the usual increases for a flat circle. So I will see you at the end of the round. So I'm just at the end of the round doing my last stitch here. Now this standing half double crochet always sort of closes up for me. There's not much left of the top. So what I do is I go to the next V, I go under that one if I can manage it, go under that one and do my slip stitch. And this means I now have created a V that lies on top of that first standing half double crochet. So once again, I'm going to cut off my yarn, pull out my end and I will be sewing in my ends. And here we are. I have sewn in the ends and I am ready for the next colour. So let's use the opal, make our slip knot, get started with our standing stitch. So this time again, you yarn over, you go under any V and you get started with your half double crochet. But this time, because it's our third round, we have three stitches in our repeat. So in the first stitch, you're going to place one half double crochet. In the next stitch, you're going to place two half double crochets. So one half double crochet in the first stitch, two half double crochets in the next. I will see you at the end of the round. I have just completed my second half double crochet in that last stitch. Now I'm doing my slip stitch. So again, skipping this one, going under the next V and doing a slip stitch that will lie over that standing stitch. There we go. And we have completed the round. I now have 30 Vs on the outside of my work and I will be sewing in my ends. 
and here we are I have sewn in the ends and this was the end of round three so now on to round four once again slip knot insert your hook and we are going to get started anywhere yarn over under a V pull up a loop yarn over and pull through the three loops we're going to have to do the following ratio of stitches so in the first stitch you place one half double crochet in the next stitch you place one half double crochet and then in the next stitch you place two half double crochets so this is your amount of stitches one in the first stitch one in the next stitch two in the next stitch and this is how you will continue and how you will keep your circle flat I will see you at the end of the row so I've just finished my last repeat of my half double crochets and now once again same thing to finish the round skip that standing stitch here go under the next V and we do a slip stitch to close the round so I'm now going to once again sew in my ends and then we will be ready for the assembly. My circle now has 40 stitches. So I now have my two circles. I also have the main panel and I also have my pencil case that I've put a ball of yarn in so I can just, you know, try it out and it's easier if you have the correct shape to work with. So I have measured to make sure I have a piece of stabilizer that's the same width and that goes from zip to zip like so, right? So all around my pencil case and I also have cut a circle that goes around there. So that's just about the same size as the panel here. So these fit quite nicely onto there. So that's perfect. Okay, but here we have created a square and this is rectangular. So we're going to have to add to that panel. And I was thinking I would do a row of double crochets here and a row of double crochets here. But I'm going to do that while we are assembling. Of course, how else would I do it? <laughs> so let's get started on doing that. So I am assembling in the buttercup colour, so let's get started with our slip knot. Insert your hook. And I'm going to get started in the corner here, so you yarn over into the corner, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we start with a standing double crochet and then we have used the back loops here as well. So I'm going to be placing double crochets in the back loop of every stitch along this side here. When you come to the join, you're going to place one stitch into the chain space, one stitch around a V of the join, like so, and then one stitch again in the chain space. So I have finished doing my row of double crochets all along the top of my panel here. I am now here at this location. I've just placed my last double crochet into the chain space. And we are now going to start working on this side while we are going to be attaching our side, our circular side of our pencil case. And we are not going to make a corner. We're just going to start working as if we are doing a straight row so we are going to do a chain to make the height this length here we're going to treat that as two locations for two stitches so I'm going to go in there just try to go into the body of the stitch but if you can't then just go around it then you take your circular panel here with the bad sides together so the good sides on the outside you're now going to pick up a V here, whichever one you want to get started in, that's fine. Then take your working yarn again, 
pull it through and you do a single crochet. So here, go again into that double crochet, wherever you can go into it. And then you're going to use the next stitch here, there, this one. And you pull through the loop and you do a single crochet. So now that we have done our first two stitches around that first double crochet there, we are going to start doing our join with our Vs and we're going to be picking up the inner loops. So there we go. So these two strands, you pick those up and you do a single crochet. Next stitch and the next, there we go. So each time you advance on your square and you also pick up the next stitch on your circle. And so this is how you will continue and I will meet you at the join. When you get to the join here, you're going to do one stitch in the corner chain space. Then here you go under that V and you go and find the next V here. And you do your single crochet. And then you do another stitch in the chain space and of course picking up the next back loop of the V on your circle. There we go. And this is what it's looking like. And we have a nice stand up edge going round our pencil case there. Now towards the end of our join here, you will notice you have a few stitches left over and that's the way it should be. I will see you at the end of the row. So I have made it all the way around and as you notice, you will have quite a few stitches left here. But of course, here we need to do that row of double crochets. So we can't do the last two single crochets here because we haven't got that double crochet to work on. So I'm just going to pull up the loop and leave quite a long end, cut it off, and we will do those in a moment. And now we are going to get started doing the double crochets on the top of this side of the panel and then do the join here. But first of all, let me do a couple of double crochets so I can finish that one join on the other side there that we were working on. So let's get started. Yarn over and we're going to do a double crochet around the chain space there, voila. And of course here we have yellow on yellow, but it doesn't matter, voila. So I'll do a few. So here of course you're going to do the same thing as you did on the other side. A whole row of double crochets. But before I continue now, so here we can now do our two single crochets that we place in that double crochet. So go into that double crochet near the base, find the back loop of the V on the circle and do your single crochet. Then here go in to the double crochet near the top, next stitch for the back loop and do your single crochet. So this now has finished our join around the circle. So yes, I cut off a little bit too much, but never mind, it's better to have too much than too little. So there we go. So that is what it looks like now. And really in effect, you have three stitches left over and that's perfect. Okay, so now let's concentrate on this side here. So we're going to continue doing the double crochets. And then here, of course, you'll be doing exactly the same thing with your second circle. So I will see you when you're at the end of joining this circle to your panel. Okay, so I now have this. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So all we have to do now is <laughs> assemble everything. And I think, yes, I have finally put my uh, ball of yarn into my yellow pencil case here with the yellow zip because that's the one I'm using. And it makes sense to do that because then your pencil case is a little bit better shaped. 
and I think it's all going to go together because I've tried it out but it's all going to shift around when you uh, are going to be you know putting it together so what I'm going to do is I'm very quickly going to just with a very simple stitch just going to sew this stabilizer onto my pencil case here just so down here so leaving a small gap for my crochet to be attached and then here as well and that way when I get to attach the crochet to that this is not shifting around because I can feel that that's going to be a problem you know you, you'll have to readjust everything all the time and if this is already attached then I think that will make things a little bit easier so that's what I'm going to do but before you do anything and also before I sewn in my last ends that's what I did anyway I did try it all out and as you know crochet will expand a little bit and I think it's nicer when it's a little bit expanded there we go it will fit around here okay so it will come closed and then with this here it should look quite nice indeed so for those who don't mind you can go ahead and just you know do your join here with your needle and thread with your crochet but I'm just going to attach this here so I can show you how to do that and I can show you nicely how to assemble it all. I've got my needle and thread here and as usual I'm just going to go and find a location near the zip to sort of go under there we go, and then come out. I'm just going to hold my stabilizer and just go into it on the corner there and just basically sew it on just so it stays into place while I am assembling because that will make life a little bit easier. And I'm using big stitches. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to see that. So I have sewn the large part of stabilizer onto my pencil case here. It's not perfect, but that's fine because nobody's going to see that. And I've also quickly attached these ends as well because they were going to go and get in the way as well, of course, you know. They were going to shift all over the place while you're uh, assembling. So this is now our pencil case prepared. We've got our cover. So let's put it in there. And make sure these bits here meet. And then here we've got the crochet to meet the zip here. We then have this side here and this part as well to meet the zip. So I have here my needle and thread. Same thing as we did before. Start somewhere near the zip. I always like to go under there and then through the fabric to go to the front. There we are. See? There I am. <laughs> And then you pull through your yarn, your thread, not yarn. <laughs> and then you bring up the piece that needs to be there. And you're going to just start with attaching that. And do two stitches here, just straight after one another, just to attach it. There we go. And now we're going to go along the zip as we have done before. So go into, there we are. Sometimes it just needs a little bit for you to get started. And each time just pull up the crochet. Now you do have to make sure you end in the right place here. So if you wanted to, you could put some pins so you know sort of where each section should end. But yeah, anything to help you in this position is good. <laughs> so
so that needs to go there so I could use one of those crocodile clips or something to clip that but I'm sure I can deal with this like this so this needs to go there so I'm just going to continue here there we go look at that so I will see you at the end here where I'll show you what to do for the circle here. So I've made it all along the side here. It's nicely attached to my pencil case. And then when you get here, make sure you work right up until you get to the corner. Then go in to your pencil case. So go into it. Of course, you're dealing with seams there as well. So do be careful. Let me try again. So here you're going to go and take one last strand, then into the very edge here. Where am I going to? Yes, that's come out. Okay, I'm in there, so I want to be underneath. There we go. See, so there I am. So that's finished this panel. Now we're going to do this side here. Now maybe you want to go around here as well, but you can't do that until you've actually made sure that all this is attached. So this is going to have to stretch and so your circle is going to have to sort of adjust with it. So making sure that your stabilizer is good in there. Bring up this end and that's going to have to sit right here. Okay, so now I'm going to come back out and I'm going to do these couple of stitches here. I'm not going to do the rest because obviously that might need to stretch and do all kinds of things yet. So after I've finished everything and you find that this moves or you find that this is coming loose, you might want to put some stitches in here, but I'm not going to do that unless I really need to. So let's come back out into the circle bit now there we go so can you see where my needle is coming out just underneath that here voila and now I'm going to incorporate these stitches into that and I'm just going to do that for these couple of stitches what is behind here is it a join there we go can I come out so yeah there we go so very carefully work your way along those few stitches there of your circle voila and then here I'm going to just pull all this up and bring that into my stitch so I might just go into the yellow here into the yellow join voila keeping it all together and here I'm going to get started straight away on inner join there. Yeah. Onto the side. There we go. So pull it up and pull up this crochet. Bring it into your sewing. And there we are. Voila. I think that's working out nicely. So let me do a few stitches just so I can get established. And so now just gently go into it with your hands and bring up your crochet. And then once you have finished with sewing it on, just flatten it all down and it will mold nicely. So let's get started here. Make sure you partition your three squares along your side here. So I'm going to sew this on and then I'll sort out the rest there. There we go. So I'll see you when you are at the end of your side here, or rather here. <laughs> Okay, so I've made it all along my side here. I am now just going to go and do that last stitch sort of at the very corner going into the pencil case there to finish off the side. And now I'm going to come out again. I'm in there. Oops, I'm going to come out again into the circle, barely in the circle there, but there we go. 
voila. And I'm going to do these three stitches. And of course, these ones here, they're already more into place because we've got everything else attached already. So I'm just going to do a couple of stitches here just to secure it. And then once again, we go into the pencil case. Come back out. There we go. Voila. And yeah, I'm liking this very much. Look at this. So we've got a yellow zip. We've got a yellow or buttercup joining. Main color is buttercup. And I have to say, I'm really liking this pencil case. So I hope you will enjoy making it. And yeah, it makes a great gift. And I think I might just use it for my makeup. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed this project and I will see you in the next one. Bye!